Hey guys, I'm Jake with Johnson Family Farmstead, and in this video, I'm gonna go over our milk machine that I made. So recently we've been asked a lot of questions about the milk machine or our milking system that we use for milking our Nigerian dwarf goats that we have here on our farm. This machine I pieced together and I built after doing a, quite a bit of research on milk machines in general. The, the milk machine that we created consists of multiple pieces. So there's a vacuum pump, there are milking lines, vacuum lines, there is a pulsator, there is a vacuum gauge, and there's a vacuum regulator. I basically put all of these pieces together to create a milk machine that will milk our goats. There's also inflations. So I'm gonna go through each piece of this machine in a little bit more detail. And so that way, if you guys have any questions on this, hopefully the video can answer all of those. If not, then just leave us a comment down below and we'll do our best. I'm not an expert milk machine maker by any means, but I did do a lot of research on a lot of the different machines that are out there. So this is gonna be a pretty long, extensive video on the milking machine equipment. So first I'm gonna start with a lot of the other machines that are out there. They, I, I've seen a lot of people use the brake bleeder uh, machine where basically you take a brake bleeder that creates a suction and then you can use some syringes um, depending on what size what size teats you have. So like this one's small, but I'll just use this for an example. So you take this off and you would you would put the teat in here and you'd have a small vacuum line that connects. The downside to those uh, machines is that there is no pulsation, right? It's just constant vacuum on the teats, which is not good for the goat's teats. You want to have a machine that has pulsation. There's also some battery operated machines out there. So those will work well. You know, if you don't have power down at your barn and uh, you have a battery operated machine, they do make some that have pulsation. The only downside that I thought to those is that they have really small milk lines. And so they're a little bit harder to clean out when you're done milking with it, but to each his own. I mean, it's not a bad thing. As long as it has pulsation, I think you're, you're doing well. Decided to build this machine and the way we built this machine is to save space in our barn. I really like when you go to a, a large dairy operation, they don't have their vacuum pumps and everything right by their machine. So I wanted to set up kind of like that so that we could relocate our pump somewhere else so it was nice and quiet, we didn't hear the pump, and it wasn't as uh, bulky. It didn't take up a lot of space, and we could I could mount it to the wall or I could maybe mount it in a cabinet where it was out of the way. So I'll walk through the parts and pieces of our machine. So this is the main, the main body or manifold and this is made from uh, three quarter inch PVC fittings. So this is a three quarter inch, three quarter inch with a half inch threaded portion PVC T and with three quarter inch PVC in between. And the way I set this up is so that we would have our vacuum line come in right here and our vacuum pump is underneath of this cabinet that I built. The vacuum line comes in here first and then this is a vacuum regulator. So this is where you would set your vacuum. I liked to have the regulator first because that gives you the most accurate vacuum pressure. I wanted the regulator first, then I did the pulsator, and then I did the vacuum gauge because I wanted the gauge as far away uh, and closest to the milk source. So this is the, the vacuum line that's actually drawing on the inflations. So you hook your vacuum line here this is regulated vacuum pressure. That regulated vacuum pressure comes down here to this lid that we ordered from Simple Pulse, which is a, a pretty nice lid. They have a lot of really good products on their website. What this does is it fits a, a three inch opening jar and it just press fits in there so it seals down nice and tight so you get good suction on your jar. So now you have vacuum, regulated vacuum pressure pulling on your jar. That regulated vacuum pressure now is hooked up to your inflation line right here. So this is uh, the other side of the lid, comes out and hooks to your what is called inflations. I've heard people call them teat cups, but these are the GEA Top Flow Z inflations. And we chose these for a couple of different reasons and I'll get to that here in a second. But basically as that vacuum pulls on your jar, that vacuum comes up this nice half inch hose, which is a large hose. It's very easy to clean out. And it comes up here to your inflations. If you didn't have the pulsator, 
then you would have constant suction on your inflation, which would be bad for the goat's teeth. And so what ends up happening is you get that vacuum and this inflation actually pinches down, kind of like when you're going, you know, when you're hand milking, you kind of, you kind of press down and squeeze the milk out of the teat. And so that, that action of the vacuum compresses that teat cup in there and starts the milk flowing. The pulsator's job is to interrupt the vacuum and let it expand back out. And so it's constantly expanding and, and opening with the pulsation. But it is more like simulating hand milking. The reason why we went with the GEA Top Flow Z inflations is that they have a very nice uh, release mechanism for when you're cleaning and when you apply the inflation to the teat for the suction. They were also the most compact inflations that we found. Um, so we have Nigerian dwarf goats, which are pretty short, and these seem to fit underneath pretty nice. You do have to set your pulsator up uh, so they have different settings for different animals. So if you have sheep, then you're going to need a different setting versus cows, uh, and that's how many how many clicks per minute uh, this this goes, and this is adjustable. Okay, let's talk about the vacuum pump. Now I have our pump housed down here under the sink, so it's a little bit quiet. This pump uses an oil, it uses oil. They do make some oilless pumps now, which I would definitely recommend. Uh, then you don't have to mess with the oil and you don't have to worry about oil vapor. When you are using this vacuum pump, you can see that little contained little deal right there. Uh, that is an oil mist eliminator so that when you're using this for vacuum and you introduce air, it doesn't spit oil out of the pump. I bought a vacuum pump that we use in the HVAC industry. So this is a five CFM pump, which is kind of rare. A lot of dairy pumps you'll find are either gonna be two or three CFM and then six CFM. So in order to milk two goats, you need a six CFM or higher so that you can have enough uh, vacuum. Uh, ours will only, we're set up to do two goats, but our pump would probably struggle a little bit because it's only a five CFM. So on our pulsator though, we have two ports. So we have one port here that can run one set of inflations and then we can take this off and we can run another set of inflations. So if we had a little bit stronger pump, we could actually hook up another set of inflations and do two goats at a time. So that's the vacuum pump. So these are the parts and pieces you're going to need to make the milk machine that I've made. This is three quarter inch regular PVC and then I used some rain or shine PVC glue. You can use pretty much any standard PVC glue. You do want to make sure that you glue it together so that it's airtight. I use an assortment of PVC tees that are reducing tees. These go from three quarter all the way through three quarter and then some of them are half inch on the top, half inch threaded. Some of them are three quarter inch threaded. This is gonna really depend on what kind of pulsator you're using and what kind of gauges you're using. So before you order your gauges, you wanna make sure and figure out what NPT size uh, they, they, the opening is so that you can buy the appropriate tees. So in our case, we use half inch threads for our gauge and half inch threads for our regulator, but I needed three quarter inch threads for the adapter for our pulsator. I also used a reducing fitting right here to go from half inch thread to half inch barb and this is where our hose is going to hook up to our vacuum machine. This is where the hose is going to hook up to our milk jar. And this is half inch thread by half inch ID barb fitting. A pulsator adapter. So this is kind of the key piece looks like this on the back so you need to order an adapter they make different kinds of adapters so what this does is this slides into that slot and then that allows us to slide our pulsator down onto our barb fitting like this the next thing you're going to need is some teflon tape you want to make sure that your threaded connections are sealed so that you don't lose any vacuum and you're going to wrap it around usually about three to four times. So I'm going to go around one time and you want to pull it tight so it gets down in the threads. And then I'm going to go around like this. So that way when you tighten the fitting in, it actually tightens, tightens the Teflon tape around the fitting. 
Okay, so we'll do all of our threaded connections with the Teflon tape, like that. And you just want to snug those up. It doesn't have to be He-Man tight. Just uh, just snug them up, you know, with a with a wrench. I cut three pieces of PVC, and I'm not going to glue them because this is really just for demonstration purposes. So you would put those in. I did four inch long pieces, but you could make this however long you wanted so that your machine could be however long or short. I like to put a little space in between so that whatever mounting system you devise, it will give you enough room to kind of grab onto it and mount it. But just for now, we're just gonna put them together. So the pulsator adapter is going to slide onto your pulsator, whichever pulsator you choose to buy. This is an adjustable pulsator, so I can adjust. And then it gives you a good idea of what pulsation you want for what you're milking. So if you have sheep, goats, or cows, this is how many uh, pulses per minute that you want to set your pulsator at. This is going to slide on in this little location right here. It does have a rubber gasket right there, uh, and you have to push pretty hard to get it on. Some pulsators, pulsators are a little easier but you wanna just slide that guy all the way on so it makes a nice tight connection. So that's all sealed. And then the last thing that we have to do is put our pulsator right on top of our bar fitting there. And now that connection is vacuum tight. And I'll start from the right. This is where your vacuum from your pump, you have a half inch diameter hose that's gonna connect here. That is going to start to pull vacuum. The first thing you're going to have is your vacuum regulator. And then after that, you're going to have your pulsator. And then after that, you're going to go to your vacuum gauge. Once you come out of there, you're going to have vacuum. You're going to have regulated vacuum flow on this line. And that line is going to be a half inch hose that goes down to your jar. So hopefully that will answer any questions that you guys had about our milking system. If you were trying to build one yourself, I would definitely recommend getting something that has some pulsation and uh, some really, you know, some silicone inflations uh, that are gentle on the teats. And uh, our goats don't mind it one bit. And we find that it's a lot faster and cleaner than hand milking. All right, so that was a lot of information on our milking system. Thanks for enduring that with me. And if you guys have any other questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, just leave a, a question down in the comments below. Thanks for watching our channel and we will see you guys on the next video.